Today we're gonna have a ton of fun as we do a head-to-head -head battle with the USA made 20 CV version of the Kershaw Link and put it up against the 20 CV Zero Tolerance 0357. Well, that is right, folks. Welcome back to another video. And I'm really excited today because we get to look at a classic that I've reviewed a few times over the years in different versions. And this is just the most recent release of the Kershaw Link. USA made the 1776 model in 20 CV steel, super premium. This bad boy I paid 80 bucks for, which is just nuts that you can get all of that for under $100. And the reason that I'm putting it up against this new for 2020 zero tolerance 0357 is because they are so similar. They have a few differences, but this ZT is gonna be about 150 bucks. So we're gonna be asking ourselves throughout this video, do the minor differences in their design and layout justify the higher price point? Or is it better just to go with the Kershaw Link? We're gonna look at both of these blades today, throw in some beautiful blade footage, see what they can do, and see which one is better suited for you in which camp you fall in. Zero tolerance, name brand, high quality performance, or budget-friendly Kershaw with high-performing steel. All right, guys, here we are, head-to-head, -head, down and dirty, side-by-side. -side. Let's really find out if the very minimal differences between these two blades justify it for you. We're gonna do a discovery process together today. So let's go ahead and look at the really where, in my astonishment, some of this stuff comes in. We're looking at, again, on both of these blades, 20 CV, this one says CPM 20 CV. Uh, I'm looking it up. From what I can tell, it's the same. It's CPM. It's not. I mean, that's where I believe all C, uh, 20 CV comes from. But we're looking at the same blade steel. Both made in the USA. ZT and Kershaw. I believe Kershaw owns ZT. I don't think it's the other way around. So, I mean, we're talking the same factors on every level. Now, I have only used uh, 20 CV a few times on some zero tolerance. And I think I've had it on maybe a bench made in the past. Um, so I don't have a ton of experience with it. The experience I have seen, it's from the same company and I'm super happy with it. It's actually rather easy to put an edge back on it when it does finally dull or if you did like damage it in some way, you were cutting and you got a little burr because you hit the ground, you know, or something like that. Uh, it's not, bru I, I like it better than M390. Uh, it seems the easier for me to work with, but still it is in the super steel world and it is um, very, very uh, edge retention prone. I'm, I'm, I'm mincing my words, but uh, the, the edge retention is phenomenal on it. And it, it is rather easy for a super steel. Again, it's not going to be like 8CR or something like that, or 420. It's going to take a lot longer, but um, it is rather easy to work with for a super steel. So uh, USA made for both of these, they're both going to be three and a quarter inches long. Overall, this has a satin finish on this particular version of the link there's lots of versions out there um and then this one has their kind of smoked out finish and then the other one that i'll be rolling in as well it has more of what they call their like wear uh finish on there uh they both have that kind of aggressive drop on the tip there for both of these now a uh, huge amount of belly on the link very similar amount of belly on the 350 from zt now, the difference with, aside from just kind of the blade shape ever so slightly, but you can see both of them have that kind of tip drop, swedge, bigger swedge here. So just some different styling in them. Now, the first thing uh, that you'll notice in dimensions, basically, is that the link will be slightly thinner. The stock back here is 0 0.11, and then it basically holds that all the way down to a precise tip there. Whereas on the ZT0350, you're looking at 0.12 and holds that down to basically the same type of tip. I mean, these tips are almost identical uh, and they are more on the precise side, which means that they're going to be great for EDC, piercing, um, precision cutting if you needed to. If you're cutting through something very precise, uh, piercing through plastic packaging to open your kid's toy. Uh, you know, or whatever, your next knife that you got, whatever it is. Um, but uh, the, they're, they are not reinforced at the tip, so they're not, I would say, super tough tips on either of these blades. Now, um, the other thing to note is that 
what I'm reading is that this has a flat, which makes sense in what I can feel on the ZT-0350, but the link does have a hollow grind, but because of the way it's designed, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you guys on the frame, it is the mildest hollow grind ever. I mean, it's almost a flat grind. I can, when you look straight down it, you can see that it is a hollow grind, but it's just so mild uh, compared to the flat. So what that means is basically for you users, you're gonna get um, slightly a stronger blade on the ZT, which makes sense. I mean, that's kind of what ZT is known for, at least in the past when I first got started, you know, heavy duty folders. And then um, it, it, they both cut so well, but the link will have a slight edge on sliciness because of the slightly thinner blade and then the hollow grind with a very mild shoulder, so mild you don't even really notice it. So it's ever so slightly better just because of the edge geometry at slicing than the ZT. It's not the fault of the ZT. The ZT is just stronger built ever so slightly. I mean, I'm talking about like the difference between, you know, a red and a green lightsaber. I mean, the differences are so minute, you probably won't even notice them. Um, but according to edge geometry, thickness and grinding, the link will have a slight edge up on slicing, but the ZT will have a slight edge ever so slight on strength. All right, these pocket clips are gonna be ambidextrous. You can swap them left and right on both. Uh, they are gonna be very similar. They're almost the exact same pocket clip, just very minute differences, and I don't see any difference really in their capability. They're gonna have a little flare on both. Kershaw ZT, you can see through to the screws to adjust or swap. A little bit wider up here near the neck on the Kershaw and slightly narrower on the ZT. Now, the one thing that I don't like about either of them is that the screws are not recessed in on either of them. So you do have to fight if you have like double reinforced pockets. Um, you do have to fight with those uh, uh, screws. Sometimes the pocket c will catch on that and then you have to kind of like readjust and push down all the way to get that full deep ride. Um, you will get fully exposed lanyard holes. They're easy to run 550 paracord through as well. So, I mean, they're exactly the same pocket clip, basically, they're just ever so slight differences. It would have been nice to see the recessing in of the screws, particularly on the ZT because of that price difference. Now, this is another aspect that is kind of interesting to me. Now, these are both going to be um, the speed safe open assisted uh, blades for both of these knives. Both have finger flippers. The flippers are almost identical. You can just see there, they're so similar. I don't really notice one way or the other. It looks like this one has just slight, the link has a slightly more rounded. This one has more of like angled adjustments, but that doesn't mean it's sharper or not on either one. Uh, and they spring open about the same. I feel like this link might actually even be a slightly, yeah, slightly snappier open than on the ZT. Now that it kind of blows my mind that they decided to go assisted on this. And I think would have been really cool with this because what I tend to see with most zero tolerance knives is either they have assisted open like what we're seeing, or they have them on like KVT ball bearings, which KVT ball bearings are awesome. They're not super durable for like super hard use blades because um, they can get gunk in them a little easier, you know, than um, just washers and these have uh, washers on them. Uh, I think it would have been awesome and would have set the ZT apart for it to come out of the box not on KBTs, but just on bronze washers, and it was not assisted. So those people who do not like the assist, and there's definitely a group of people, and I would kind of put myself in there. I'm not opposed to assist, but if you ask me, do you want assisted open or do you want manual? I'm going to go with manual if I have an option. And so I think if they had made these bronze bushings with that were just really smooth, good action, uh, and not assisted, that would have alone gravitated some people to the ZT over the link and made some people go, okay, yeah, hey, I'll, I'll pay extra money for that. So it's kind of odd to me that they decided to go with the assisted and that both of the, the link already is assisted, so that's not as big an issue. Um, so it's just weird. Uh, it's fine. They have good stop bars for both of them. So, I mean, that's going to be really strong. Again, going to spring and snap right open for both. I have just slight rock side to side on the ZT, none up and down. Slight play side to side and none up and down on the link. The lock, being a liner lock right there on the link, totally fine, hits about 40% of the blade right there. Easy for me to disengage. 
close one-handed. That's an important part for me about assisted knives. If they are assisted, I like to be able to close them one-handed. So when I can't, that's kind of annoying. So I appreciate that. Then uh, you will see that on the ZT, the locking mechanism does seem to be slightly thicker than on the link, which is a positive. Just seems to have a little bit of a better engagement. Just ever so slightly protrudes from the G10 there. And then I can easily move that and close it the same way. So Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and talk handles because this is another aspect um, that may you know, set these two blades apart for you. And again, that's what we're doing here in this video is I'm showing you head to head so you can make a decision. Does it make sense to upgrade to the ZT? Because they're, I'm, I mean, they're so similar. Or is it just make sense to save yourself almost you know, 80 bucks, 70 bucks? and stick with the link because particularly of a lot of the features that we're seeing today. So the weight differences, the link is gonna be 4.7 ounces, the ZT will be 4.3. So about 5, 0.5 ounces less, you're not really gonna notice that much. They both come in at under five ounces for being kind of beefy assisted you know, blades. So when we go back to the link here, we're looking at aluminum handles. I really like the aluminum. It's got some cool traction patterns on there like the green, uh, you're going to get a form of polymer backspace with some jimping, but it's recessed, so it doesn't really give you any traction in that regard. Good screw-ins all around, uh, good contouring, no issues there. just looks cool with a little bit of ribbing and stuff. I like it better than the original link that just was like a flat side there. Uh, now, the handle length on the um, link is going to be 4.4 inches, and it's going to be 0.49 overall on the thickness, whereas on the ZT, you're looking at 4.375, and then you're looking at a thickness of 0 0.5. So you're looking at a slightly thicker handle just by like almost nothing. Um, but you are gonna find that the link is actually that 0 0.05 inches longer overall so i don't think that really matters that much in the handle sizing that we're about to see here so when i open this bad boy up again on the link guard fits really well no jimping no hot spots my pinky is able to rest right there and i'm just in really good control with the link the pocket clip doesn't cause any you know unusual hot spots and i've just got really good traction feels warm to the touch and because of the guard being really nice right there and locking me in. I don't feel like I'm gonna accidentally slide up, hurt myself for all general EDC and utility tasks. Now on the flip side we have here, and they're both gonna have steel liners, the ZT has that G10, and I would say it's medium grit G10. It's not super aggressive, but it's not slick either. So I, I like it, it's a good blending. You do have that um, backspacer right here that's exposed with those steel liners coming out there so it's a little more heavy duty got a little bit of jimping on the back there that the link doesn't have open that bad boy you do have a little bite of jimping right there but it's not sharp and then you do have that nice cut in fits my hand just the way the cut in is it's slightly better ever so slightly but i mean you can't really notice it uh, the angles are fine transitions are well done there no issues little bit of flow through up near the front near the mechanism same on the link so i mean so similar um, just slightly lighter on the zt because of the g10 versus aluminum and obviously better traction because of the g10 over the aluminum but for both of these knives uh, because i would consider them both mainly because of the tip aspect to them um, and the liner lock not i mean the liner lock is strong and fine but i would use them more as general utility they're not super heavy duty like a cold steel recon or something or some of the other super heavy duty um, zts that are out there so to kind of conclude this again about 80 bucks this version is uh, about 150 so do the math on that 70 dollars more for the zt and then you can get this version right here, which is their like working finish uh, for about 148, I think, something like that. So guys, I'll have links for you below. Again, over GP Knives, Amazon, uh, Bleed HQ. We appreciate when you purchase through all the hyperlinks that we offer to you, as well as check out the other stores that are available. Um, links for you, 511, Mystery Ranch, Knock Around Sunglasses, if you're looking for good sunglasses as summer starts approaching. Um, Budget-friendly, but really work well. 
as well as um, PayPal. I just want to give a shout out to the PayPal supporters. I know times are tough, times are crazy right now, um, but some of you are still supporting and I just really appreciate it. And if you do have some extra income, you know, and that's something that you want to do and you appreciate the um, data and just the entertainment that, you know, we give you week in, week out, we really appreciate our PayPal supporters and you can do that through the links that we offer to you below. Because, this is what's really funny, I bought the link, sweet, Awesome, paid the 80 bucks. I bought this ZT. So the funny thing is after this showed up a few days later, this guy showed up and I didn't request this. This came from Kershaw slash ZT. I have a connection over there. I've requested things in the past and they've been willing and generous to send it enough over to me to be able to test and review. Uh, I did not request this knife, it just showed up, which is pretty cool and I appreciate that. Um, but uh, I did not request it. And so uh, it just gives me an opportunity to hook you guys up, which is pretty dope. So um, later on in the year, once all this kind of coronavirus stuff blows over, we will be doing a giveaway on one of these ZTs. I'll probably include it in our anniversary, our yearly anniversary giveaway, which is pretty sweet that we're able to do that. Um, and so just stay tuned for that as months go on. And once things start shipping freely and you know, all that, uh, we will do a giveaway for one of these ZTs. But in the meantime, uh, you know, you really got to decide for yourself. If you were to ask me because I own both, I mean, I kind of gravitate a little bit more to the zero tolerance, but honestly it is so close in comparison to the link that I mean, unless you basically prefer the feel of G10, it just makes more sense to go with the link. I mean, you save yourself 70 bucks, you're getting basically the same blade shape, size, assisted open, pocket loop. I mean, all of it for, I mean, is G10 really worth $70 more to you? For some of you, it will be in some of the blade shape and you want flat grind versus hollow. So I wanna hear from you guys in the comments below, how do you view your usage of the knife? Which one do you connect with more? Does the link just make more sense? I mean, it is awesome for 80 bucks, you're getting a USA made um, 20 CV blade that that's even possible on the link, it's so cool. Um, a, and it is kind of mind boggling uh, for the ZT. I mean, the 150 seems a lot more reasonable for the materials. So it's awesome that the link's coming in at such a cheap price point. But I'm really looking forward to hearing your guys' thoughts and comments on this particular head to head. Where do you fall? You fall in the zero tolerance camp on the 0357, 357, or on the 1776 Kershaw link. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. Throwing up content like this every single week. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, know that you're not alone. We love you. We're praying for you. Uh, and you guys are awesome. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.